It's a good morning. For the, the, the fewer people we have, the more interactive we can do it. <laughs> uh, it's not the worst case for me. I already had just one in the audience, so it was really a nice interactive talk. Um, for the people who know me, uh, you know that I say good morning all the time. For the people who don't know me, I'm uh, Mario from uh, Switzerland. I organize since a bit more than seven years the Randall meeting sets. Uh, a meeting in the middle of nowhere in the Swiss Alps. Actually, it's not geographically, it's quite in the middle of Europe and we are close to the Italian border. We are in the French part and we speak German there. But when we have the hacking meetings, we speak English there. So it's quite not in the middle of nowhere. Um, let's, uh, if you have read the intro text about this presentation, it's uh, a bit about um, historical um, review of uh, what, what we did in Rwanda for the last seven or eight years and a thing um, for you to motivate to organize sprints yourself. We had last year um, a nice discussion around at the Rwanda meetings. We made a short buff about how to organize sprints. Um, there's a thing in, in KDE that in the recent years we had fewer sprints during the years, and I think it would be something that would be really nice if we have more sprints in the future. So in general, uh, in the following 25 or 20 minutes, if you have any questions or if you have anything to tell, please do it during uh, the talk and don't wait till the end of the talk. Uh, I know what. Okay, how it started. Um, Rondar meetings are meanwhile quite big, so I would propose to start small, grow step by step every year a bit more, or stay stable, that's quite okay as well. Um, I think personally two people for a week and working on some KDE or free software stuff are already a sprint doesn't need to be just about code. You can write some documentation, you can do some artwork, you can do other stuff. Promo work is important as well, communicational stuff. Do it um, and get some people invited to your place. It's, it's already spring. In between my slides with some tips about how to do sprints and what, what to look for, um, you will find some pictures of recent um, Rondar meetings. I hope I didn't pick too many embarrassing pictures. Um, we see here first version of the Rondar meetings back then. It was um, actually it started this way. I used KD software, free software for quite some time, and I wanted to give something back. Uh, I studied computer sciences in my minor, but I don't think I'm the best developer and don't write the most brilliant code. So I searched another way to give something back. And I tried it with the desktop I used. So I got in contact with the Plasma people. You see the Plasma founder Aaron Saigo is there and a lot of other people who are, meanwhile, some of them meanwhile disappeared, some came back. Um, David Edmondson is missing, for example, I think, there still. Um, and I got in contact with them and I proposed to them um, Hey guys, you could come to my place. I have a nice holiday, holiday house in the middle of the Swiss Alps and I would uh, cook for you. I would give you some electricity. I tried to find some internet connectivity there and um, you have some places to sleep. Why don't you come there and hack it there a bit? And uh, after I think ha half a year or, or a year, um, finally the occasion came and we found a date that fitted for everybody and the people arrived in Rwanda and everything started. You see, it's quite small. You don't see our chalet, there's a holiday house there, but it's, uh, we had around 20 people in a house that normally, yeah, normally you have four to six people there regularly. Uh, we had another uh, flat nearby where some of the people slept and we ate, ate together. I cooked for them. Everybody, almost everybody did a bread during this week. If you look close, that's the former Plasma logo there. Um, and you see Aaron working there. That was the living room. During the week, 
mostly crowded as that. My job was mostly, as I said, cooking. And from time to time, I needed to go downstairs and reinsert the fuse. <laughs> What's quite nice in Rondeau is, as I said, it's in the middle of nowhere, uh, but you have a lot of, you can have a lot of relaxing time. We you can do some nice hiking. You can do some um, dam building together in the rivers, although I told these guys don't do it there because it's dangerous. And actually, I think five minutes after they came up of the bed, um, the water came. So it was lucky that we still have plasma. <laughs> that was the first version. And um, we had some visitors there as well. Um, Miriam and Mark from Amarok were back then there and thought it's nice we could do something the next year as well. It worked really well. It was really inspiring and really productive there. But when my parents saw their living room, they told me, okay, Mario, once and never again. <laughs> so we needed to find a bigger house. In general, if you want to do a sprint, the logical, one of the logical first steps is choose a topic, something that interests you, um, in free software development, you mostly say, um, search a niche you want to scratch, or a project you use very often, or a project, of course, doesn't, seem, doesn't need to be li like for me, that you're not yet involved in a project, you can already be involved in a project, and then you just search other people who are interested in this topic, and you find a place and a time where you meet. So this was uh, too many slides. That was the second version of the Rondeau meetings. It was the first time in the big house. It's actually the biggest house in, the, in town, even bigger than the church, which are mostly the biggest uh, buildings in town. Um, it's quite an old building, and um, it's amazing how many people of Europe were already there in their childhood. A lot of, of classes were there. Um, we could use it. We rented it for a week. We had uh, back then, and actually this year, it was a good friend of mine who's a professional chef who cooked for us. We've mostly um, the area there is famous for their good and nice weather, and we had time for a barbecue there as well. This mountain, some of you might um, recognize, is the, the Motorhorn. The, Nobody knows or nobody outside the KDE and free software community knows about Rondau. It has less than 400 people there. But um, there's a very famous touristic uh, city nearby that's Sermat with the Matterhorn. Uh, very touristy means very expensive as well. So we mostly make a short travel there. But um, I think we, okay, we can afford it here. But we can't really afford to go to Sermat for such meetings. This house is really nice. Um, it has um, a capacity of up to 100 people, which we don't want to reach. We, we had um, of around um, between 40 and 60 people in the, in the last years, which is quite nice. We have still space in the house for the case it's raining, where you can go to, to other rooms and um, where we have the possibility to, to go a bit away. Um, we have a big room under the roof there, where mostly the people are. Um, back then, I don't know if you see it very well, that was the internet connection that year. So we tried to find out if DSL is working there and we were ripping off of the cables out of the walls and it worked okay for the week. As I said, we always, um, we, if, you, if you live for a week under the same roof, eat under the same roof, um, heck under the same roof all the time you need some some hours to go out and do something else and thus we always have a social event when we go to Sermat either we went we went there to to watch closely the or not so closely the the, the motorhorn if the clouds were not there or uh, we offered for the people who wanted it a hike back for like three hours um, and people really liked it I think in the first year, we had uh, multimedia and edu, educational people there, and um, I think multimedia is somehow, meanwhile, part of the infrastructure of the Rondau meetings. 
that's the thing you need as well. I mean, um, you need a place. De depends on the size you organize. Um, you need some kind of infrastructure, the electricity, of course, internet connectivity, food. I mean, most of the sprints are organized the way that um, people stay. That's the next one, accommodation. At a place, uh, at a hotel or a hostel nearby, so there's not everything under one roof. And um, then you don't really need to care about food. There are restaurants nearby. If you are in the middle of nowhere, you need to have uh, somebody who cooks. And you need to get the people there. But uh, that's mostly not a problem to find somebody interested. There we see um, the Rwanda meetings in the year 2011. Uh, in the background you see a picture with uh, some drilling machines. That was the year when we decided, uh, the former year I didn't find a picture. We had a lot of cables hanging through the staircase, so not just the internet connection was quite dangerous to walk by. Um, but uh, we wanted to fix this and as we saw that the Rondor meetings become make sense, people like to come there and we probably will continue for, for some more years. We asked the owners of the, of the house if they like to provide us the hardware and we would wire the house for them. Um, that means uh, some months before the Rondor meetings would happen, we, I organized there's a smaller one, quite big um, drilling machines with a driller like this one because the walls, that's, as I said, the house is 150 years old. Um, we need to drill quite big holes. Um, it was an experience I'd like to have only once in my life. Mm -hmm. But um, the advantage is now that we have the whole house wired, we have um, Wi-Fi through the house, we have um, Ethernet connections in the house, and I just need to push a button in theory. What can happen in Rwanda? There's always the question before the, the new participants come to Rwanda is what, what's the temperature like? So that's the weather on the 1st of June there, normally summer, but that can happen. So we had really um, five centimeters of snow for like two hours on this day. Um, under the roof, we started then uh, as well that if you have, that's a thing of the Rwanda meetings as well, we have mostly different groups there. Some of them work more in parallel, but we tried to, to use the synergies that people tell each other what they are doing. So we tried, we always try to avoid that people go home and realize, hey, this guy would have been there. David Ford could have fixed my buck. Why didn't I ask him? So we have uh, different uh, presentations up in the big room and since something like two or three years ago we record them as well so the people outside can watch them afterwards as well. And if you're ever nearby this house, which won't probably happen until you come to run door meetings, you can use the Wi-Fi for free. <laughs> so legal matters, that's the story you wanted me. By the way, there, there's... Um, the president of our association and we or I searched some people to found an association for the Rondor meetings um, simply because I wanted to get some legal responsibilities from my shoulders. Um, that was the time around this time I, I um, first met my wife and meanwhile we have two kids so my responsibilities in life changed a bit. That was the year in 2012 I think when we had at first um, 20 people from India who wanted to come. So I was used to invite them, write them, people who need a visa, invite them. So they had a simpler procedure to get their visa. And then one day I got a call from the embassy of Mumbai and they called me, hey, what's Rondo meetings? What are you doing there? Why do you invite people? Are you aware that you're responsible, responsible for every person, 30,000 euros if they disappear? in Switzerland or Europe, and then I started to count, okay, 600,000, mm, it's not my normal budget. Um, I think a year before, it already started in a more positive way that we got a, a big um, 
the biggest uh, Swiss um, telecommunication company, Swisscom, that sponsored us quite an amount of money. And all the money went through my personal account, which, yeah, I'm mostly a trustworthy person, but I prefer if the amounts <laughs> raise that uh, somebody takes an eye on it. And so in 2012, we founded the Rondar Meetings Association, which is, by the way, now a community partner of KDEV. We will announce it soon in the next days. So in, in general, to go back to the smaller um, sprints that you will organize, I think mostly it's not a problem uh, legally that you should worry. I mean, you can have people that need a visa, but KDEV will help you. The, they have quite an experience in it. They can write the invitation letters. We have some experience now as well. Uh, Simon did it for quite some years. And there is help all over the place. And I mean, uh, the great Kenny, who does a lot of organizational stuff for KD, can share his experience as well. That's 2012. The participation rate um, was more or less stable. I think 2011 was till now the biggest one. There uh, was the Platform 11 Sprint, which is now known as um, KF5, KD Frameworks 5. A lot of it, a lot of it was done in Rwanda. Um, what's mostly interesting is to see how the groups uh, work there in Rwanda. I mean, different groups have different styles on working. Normally, uh, we as the organizers don't um, push any any directions on this, so we just offer the infrastructure that people can use it and organize themselves. But it's interesting to see groups that, um, in the worst case, and that happens almost never, people are sitting right beside each, uh, besides each other and still do IRC, although they are face to face there. Um, but mostly you see people uh, really using the infrastructure, so they are um, discussing using post-its and doing Kanban-style discussions, then um, split up in groups, use the rooms that we have there, go outside without the computers, um, just do a hike, get some inspiration, come back in the evening probably, they um, do some coding and there's really amazing work going on. I always say people outside um, that I really find it astonishing how um, how the own motivation and the, the the will to spare their free time it's, it's amazing how much work gets done and it's somehow sad to see somehow satisfying to see that people leave Rwanda not relaxed but they need another week of holidays <laughs> to get back to a new energy um, here we see back then that was the accessibility group. I think this guy was from GNOME. So we tried to bring other projects to Rwanda as well. I mean, the problem or no problem from my side is that I have the best connections in, in KD. There are no most people. and But I always try to bring other people. Um, I mean, the KD accessibility group had, had great contact with the GNOME accessibility guys. I think the year before we had some GNOME guys as well. Uh, video line with Sean Baptiste Kempf was there already, uh, and I heard that Adrian, Adrian is uh, trying to bring some more other projects to Rwanda and some more work for us there, which is good. Financial matters. Um, mostly, you have some cost, costs in some way. I think at the start, if you're not some local people um, of the same country, you will have costs like um, bringing people to your country, um, which is a place as well where KDEV helps quite a lot and uh, is amazing, at least from my experience. We always had a good connection with KDE, KDEV board to um, solve these problems and get people to the country. Other stuff can be um, that you don't want to spend your uh, own food reserves and um, want some money for the food. And I think that's something that KDEV can help you if you need help. Um, but the further you go with your sprint, the more often you organize it, you will find local supporters. You can um, 
tell companies in the local area you should use new, uh, local newspapers, radio to tell people about what's happening there. Mostly there are at least a few people who are interested in uh, Rondau. We tried it with the open day in the recent years that people could come to our house for a day and take a look over our shoulder and see what we're doing there and why do people from Brazil to Peru and India come for a whole week to Rondau and bring 50 more people to a population of 350. That's 2014. Um, you might see some people you recognize, some other people um, we had. That was the year, I think, with, with most of the families there. What we, what at least I heard from, from people coming to Rwanda, um, people who finished their studies at universities, um, started to work, they needed to decide between should I go to a KDE sprint or should I spend the time with my family on summer holidays. And that was something I thought I could solve there somehow because it's a nice place for families there as well. So why don't these people bring their families along with them? And that worked quite well. I mean, I brought, oops, brought my family there as well. I need to produce some more helpers. Um, and there were quite some people over the recent years who brought their family with them. And as I said, we don't full fill the house during the week. We always have some rooms free. And um, of course, KDE doesn't pay their travel or their uh, stay there. But, but compared to Sermat or other places in Switzerland, we can offer quite cheap accommodation and food there. And I think from the feedback, people liked it. And uh, below you see, I think this was the first year that um, Bruno Kudwa from Shekompri was there and he did some life testing with my son, who really liked it. For me, and I think in general, if you like to do organizing, it's, it's, it's really fun and joy of organizing because you have to do so, so many different things. I mean, in Randa, it's actually, I, I do a hotel for a week. I do everything from taking care of the toilets, um, see that the chef is doing some food to internet connectivity, st internet connectivity stuff, um, see that people arrive, see that people um, um, find contacts there and see that people find their way, way back home. So it's really quite diverse what you're doing there. But nonetheless, it's, um, it's a lot of work. And the further your event will grow, the more work there is. But um, it's another thing. I think it's very important to keep the fun and joy in organizing this. Um, take a look at yourself. Take care of yourself. Maybe uh, if it's too much or um, I didn't tell. There was one year in this. The first Rondau meetings were in 2009. So we had the opportunity, if you count back, to do eight Rondau meetings in 2013. I personally needed to cancel it because um, my wife had an accident where she um, where she needed quite some rehab during the year. Everything went fine, but I just didn't have time, and I didn't want to spend. I couldn't spend time on it. So take a year off, and then you will value it even more the next year. But take a look at you, take an eye on yourself, and um, see that you um, don't burn out. But I think there's a general rule in um, development as well, not just in organizing sprints. This was uh, last year. Similar group. Conky is still there with the little one as well. There you see a nice picture of the Cadian Life people who um, got contact with, I think that's a um, guy from the visual design group where they do some um, review of the user interface. On the other side, you see some visitors who are playing with Shekompri, trying um, out new stuff and are probably, at least these, these kids came back almost every year, some new KDE software users who come there. There you see another um, distraction we offer during the week. Um, and I, today I got a new idea for another more sportive um, distraction during the year. Distraction. 
Um, that's a, a puzzle we always have there on a table. That's mostly a puzzle of between, between 1,000 and 1,500 pieces. It's the group picture from the year before. So we always try, uh, or people can do it between compiling um, or this kind of stuff to um, do this puzzle and finish it. And there were years we could finish it, and there were years um, where it didn't work. I didn't do study about if it correlates with the success of the meeting, um, but people seem to, seem to like it. And that's, that's a nice picture about different groups that are there who talk with each other, Miriam, Gilles, and Olivier, um, from different groups that talk about um, common problems or common things. So I think in general it's uh, it's work you do to um, facilitate work other people can do and motivate them. So if you offer them a great environment, it doesn't need to be the middle of nowhere. Um, um, people will come if you're welcoming and Katie in general is in my opinion very welcoming. Um, people can be very, very productive there and it's still a pleasure um, to offer the week to different free software hackers and hackers. So that's last year. Um, as I told you, we have different, we have quite a lot of rooms there. So last year, people decided to use another big room. Um, marble, marble guys are meanwhile. I think that's that's mostly the occasion where uh, Marble mentors and Marble Google Summer of Code students meet each other the first time. But more, but, but no. and Marble is meanwhile something like infrastructure of KD, of the Rondal meetings as well. They are there almost every year. Um, Torsten mostly. Sometimes we it matches by coincidence that the moon phase is the right one, and he brings his telescope. So you can go outside and um, enjoy the the clear sky which you have in the mountains and see some stars there as well and there you see the people standing politely in a row <laughs> to get their food which of course people need to get more energy to work again um, what we don't see here is um, I mean Switzerland is quite famous for chocolate and we tried to, my personal goal is that people leave with at least two kilos more each um, and for people who were there, they know why and we make several chocolate rounds during the day and people um, should have beneath the beer enough energy to coat like crazy. So, thanks for listening. Are there any questions? Um, for the case not, I'm still here till tomorrow or something after um, noon. Yeah, that's it from my side. Yes. You have themed uh, meetings. How do you pick the themes every year? Yeah, the question is, uh, I themed the meetings. How do I get to the themes or topics of the meeting? Um, at first, uh, it was mostly that I, that I picked the groups that wrote my software. I mean, Plasma, <laughs> I used it. Uh, then other groups um, learned about the Rondon meetings and, and wanted to join as well. I mean, we have this infrastructure ready. It doesn't matter if 10 more people are there or not. And in the recent years, um, I or we, people in KDE, started to talk with each other. What could be a good topic? What, what are we doing right now? I mean, a year or two ago, we had bring touch to KDE. There was a lot of communication between the different groups, and we thought, well, let's make a common theme. That's how we selected the themes. Yeah. But we are always open, as I said, to, to other groups as well. We have the infrastructure there or to other ideas. I always never say no. Well, and sometimes you urge other people, like you want to be able to write a book, and that coincided with the framework of people being there, and that worked out really well. Yeah. So. Yeah. We had one year the, the, the book sprint there where really worked well that the coders and their documentation writers were sitting side and by side. When we were not getting people coming in to talk to us and to write stuff, we kept chocolate and all that. <laughs> that worked very well. 
<laughs> yeah. I have no idea how. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, this was the last talk in this room as I was informed, so let's clean it up. <laughs>